my jazz arrangers and enthusiasts today, I'm going to talk about 2D voicings. So normally, when I'm writing for the brass section or for the saxophone section, I like to give each of the players their own pitches. When I'm writing for five saxophones, it's normal to uh, either write four-part harmony and and then have the baritone double the lead out though an octave lower, or to write five part harmony where each part, each player gets its own part. In writing for the brass, I try to give each player his own note. It has more impact and sounds more interesting to me than doubling the trombones an octave below the, the trumpet. So I, I like, I, I like the, uh, the dissonance and, uh, and I like the density of having all that interesting stuff going on. So when I put the saxophones and the brass together in the voicings of a melodic nature, I generally use what's called tutti voicings, where I write four-part harmony in the trumpets, uh, generally in close position, like uh, this is a C6 chord, something like that, or it could be a C major seven something like that, and then double the uh, trombones an octave below. If I've only got three trombones, then I just double the top three guys. Or I could double, I could double the top two and the fourth. Either. And then the saxophones, there are two ways to do this. The first is if the if the lead trumpet player is in in the in his in the staff, his part is in the staff. It doesn't go uh, above a G or an A flat. If he's uh, only use four saxophones, one of the players will not be involved in this, and I will double from the second trumpet down. So, uh, for instance, if we have a C a C major chord like that, the third. Uh, and then the, and then the uh, saxophones would have with the baritone doubling the lead trumpet and an octave below. I love the, the, the brightness of the lead trumpet and the darkness of the baritone at the octave. A uh, baritone player needs to bring his part out a little bit uh, so that it emphasizes the lead and uh, that makes it sound balanced. The trombones are going to be doubled right below the trumpets and the saxophones are so let's uh, let's listen to a few examples of this uh, the first one is uh, from stopping on a riff this is uh, an example that's in my book uh, creative jazz composing and arranging where I, I explain this in greater detail but uh, uh, this example is going to be two bars uh, before letter M in the chart and uh, it's going to be um, uh, it's a background uh, to one of the solos, and uh, the rest of the ensemble is playing uh, these tuny voicings. <laughs> this next example is very different in style. That one was a very straight ahead Count Basie swing piece. This one uh, is called Rising Storm. It's more of a Latinish kind of a piece. Uh, um, sort of in a higher silver vein, although it also, um, if you know the Duke Ellington album Afro Bosa, it's kind of in that style as well. It's, it's a more modern kind of a, a groove and, and a, um, a context. But the two voices work great on this too. It's, a, it's just going to be a four bar section of this piece, but it comes in handy. following example is a longer passage. This is a more bebop oriented line uh, in the lead trumpet part. Actually, it's in the, written in the third part because uh, the players that I was writing for, I wanted that particular player to play the lead. The tutti voicings uh, involve a lot of passing chords. And um, just because it's four part harmony, uh, 
doesn't mean that the, it should be, it should sound like 1930 or 1940. As you can tell from this, it's a, a more modern sound than that. Uh, Gil Evans uses this, uh, this kind of approach uh, a lot in his, in his ensemble writing. So this is uh, from Do It Again. Uh, this is also, the example is also in uh, my book, volume one. I said there were two ways to do 2D voicings. Uh, here's the second way now. What happens if the lead trumpet goes above the staff? Uh, when that happens, the baritone can't, can't double over the octave. So what we do is say the, uh, the trumpets are up here. Uh, then I double the saxophones starting, the lead alto will be an octave below the lead trumpet. So he'll be, and then the baritone will be two octaves below the lead trumpet, and the trombones are still, still um, an octave below the trumpets. This example is uh, is from a chart of mine called "One Too Many," dedicated to my old friend uh, Al Cohn, and uh, it was meant to be in his style. So this is uh, there's eight bars of an ensemble, and it's pretty high on the lead trumpet, and you can hear all the 2D voicings, and then it goes up a, a third, and so it's very high, and you can hear, it's very effective using this, uh, uh, the 2D voicings where the saxophones are at the octave with the, they're in the octave below the trumpets, um, so you get to hear that in this, this passage. Thanks for watching this episode of Writing for Big Man. If you like this lesson, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the other lessons on my channel. If you want to know more, there's tons of information in my books, Creative Jazz Composing and Arranging, Volume 1 and 2, which you can find on my website in the description below. The books have plenty of examples and techniques, and you can download the scores to follow along. Thanks for watching and happy arranging.